Hi guys, this is Chris, uh, bringing you a, another video, uh, keeping you informed into the electrical industry, little tips and tricks. And if you're just starting out in business and you're struggling to work out for yourself which certificates to, to buy for the uh, electrical installation certificate, minor works, condition reports, whatever it is that you're doing, um, sometimes it can be a bit daunting knowing which software to buy and what have you. So you might decide that you're going to handwrite these things for the first uh, first start of you know setting your business up so what we'll do is we'll have a look at a really uh, easy way of being able to get access to these certificates without buying books uh, without buying pads that are likely to go out of date or you're potentially going to ruin them um, and you can practice with these forms as well so let's get going open the search engine up whichever you prefer today I've got Google going and what I'm going to do here in the search bar is type in uh, BS7671 model forms hit enter and uh, what you can see is there's various options that have appeared and I'm going to select this one here the very first one just make sure it's electrical.diet.org hover the mouse over it and it takes you straight to the page that you want now if you if you go via the IET website it can be a little bit tricky to try and find these forms so you're better searching in the uh, search engine that you use just to get access to them um, what you've got here is the, the model forms, which are BS7671 2018 model forms. Okay, we've got an electrical installation certificate, we have a minor works, and we have an electrical installation condition report. At the bottom, we can also download all of the forms, so it's a complete package. Right, so moving on to the, uh, the one that we're just going to look at today, just to keep things short. If I click on this, what it does is it opens up the model form. The first page consists of usage and reproduction of IET forms, so the rules that you have to adhere to. And if we move down, there's some information there uh, about the certificate and the use of them. And then moving further down, there is notice uh, for the persons producing the certificate. And finally, we get into the actual certificate itself. So we have an electrical installation certificate that meets the requirements of BS7671. I haven't paid a penny for it. I've downloaded it. It's black and white, so it's not chewing through all my ink. I can practice as many times as I wish. And a lot of people will say, well, can I use these model forms? And the answer is yes, you can. Uh, there is absolutely no reason why not. Um, every form out there on the market, including all the software packages, guys, are based around this model form. So there's no problem with using this whatsoever. The only differences are that there is slightly um, different layout and there is slightly different information that is on the forms to as opposed to the ones that you buy over the counter. Now, the, the people who produce the, the written pads are not going to thank me for this information because if you do a real job, um, so you've done an installation, you need to produce a certificate for it, you can actually issue one of these. Um, I've used them myself over a number of years. In the early days, I used to take photocopies of it. Uh, now it's dead easy. They're downloadable as a PDF. You just print off as many as you want. If you get a, um, a package called PDF um, Writer or Professional PDF Editing Software, which you can buy for most Apple devices, I'm not too sure on Android to be honest, and uh, you can actually edit these certificates. So you could click in the box there where it says Details of Client and you can actually type in words to, to whatever it is that you need to put in there, a name and address, etc, etc. Uh, just while we're on this page, um, moving down, obviously... We have the age-old problem that uh, a lot of people uh, encounter. And you do have to, they are a multi-signatory form, so you do have to sign in multiple places. Um, it's not a one signature does all, I'm afraid. So just bear that in mind when you're using these certificates, uh, that the uh, even though they're free, the, there is a necessity for to read through and, um, and, and sign in the various places that are applicable. So if you're the designer of the work, you need to sign there. There's only one designer involved. If you are the if you're the inspector or the tester, then obviously the um, the signatories will go into here. And moving down the page, you do have to repeat that information there. 
But what I used to get into the habit of doing was I would pre-fill these boxes. So I would print this off as a PDF and import it into my editing software. And I'd put my name and address in all of those boxes. And as and when I needed a form, particular installation, I'd just print one off and the information was all pre-printed. Um, moving down the page, we have a schedule of inspections. So you can put ticks in there or not applicable as appropriate. And then moving down the page again, um, even though it's the wrong way around at the moment, again, through editing software, you can actually turn that around and start to pre-fill some of the information that's on this page, such as in this area here with your test instrument, serial numbers and so on. Um, why not pre-fill the information? You know, so many people that carry on handwriting these things and every time they fill one of these certificates in, they're wasting five minutes a day or more a day pre-filling the same information over and over and over. Um, get it in there, guys, and get it pre-printed. Um, then all you have to do is just press the print button and ask for how many copies. Now, as regards to actually sending these things out to your customer, there's lots of different ways of doing that. You can scan it into your computer. There's lots of apps that you can buy these days uh, that will allow you to scan an image and convert it to a PDF or other types of format. And from there, on your mobile phone, you can send it straight to your customer. So you don't need fancy software. You don't need to be spending hundreds of pounds a year. You can quite simply, if you need to do, and it fits what you're doing as a business, use these forms um, without any fear or worry that uh, you're breaking any rules. And it's the same if you're a member of a scheme as well. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, if you're a member of a competent person scheme, you can still use these model forms. Um, like I said, nobody's going to have a go at you for doing that. The, uh, they do uh, form part of the IET uh, BS7671 wiring regulation standard. And therefore, like I've said at the early start of the video, they comply fully with all the requirements that you need to have. One little uh, pointer that I would sort of say and as a suggestion is where it says extent of installation covered by the certificate, uh, I would try and put a little bit of detail in there. And I always used to include as well the make and manufacturer of the board um, just so as I had a record of it. It doesn't give you any option anywhere. In fact, most of the certificates don't uh, for list listing the manufacturer's name. It just helps if you ever go back to the job and the board's ever been changed, you've got the name of the manufacturer. Um, another bit of information that I also put in there is I used to just put that the uh, the installation was, let's say, for instance, a 12-way split Wilex board, and I'd use three ways on each side. That way it stops people from interfering with the installation certificate and trying to add their little bit to the end. And you might think to yourself, well, the handwriting might be different. Yep, but at the end of it all, guys, you've got to be the one person that has to explain in a court of law that it isn't you. So just bear that information in mind when you're filling your certificates out and I'll be back with you very, very soon with some more tips and advice on, on form filling. If you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments box below. I do appreciate your feedback and I appreciate all the following that the channel is getting. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon on the next one. Thanks very much.